<laughs> seeing that? That's an awful feeling. Good morning everyone. Hope you're all having a wonderful day today. As you can probably tell by the intro to this video, we're going to be talking about the Stag Arms 3G Compensator and just how obnoxious, really, really obnoxious this little guy is. Um, so as you can probably tell from the intro of this video, I was really, really surprised by how effective it is at controlling vertical recoil. This guy here, uh, I bought it, so let's go ahead and so, say why I got this guy. I got this guy for about 25 bucks online. I was looking around and just testing out some new muscle devices on different guns, and so I came across this guy. I didn't really read any reviews on it, um, but I just thought, okay, it's a Stag Arms uh, item. So I went ahead, I bought this guy for about 25 bucks, delivered, and uh, just threw it on my 16 inch BCA upper and was gonna see how it performs. Anyway, so we took this guy out for a little bit of video shooting and in no way did I think that it would be video worthy or that I would have really strong opinions about it one way or the other. But after I went out there and uh, shot a few rounds through it, I was very surprised and very, uh, very, very surprised in how it affected recoil. So when you're firing it, as you can probably see in the video, um, it pretty much feels like somebody's just tapping the end of your barrel downwards with a stick or a ruler or something like that just every time you fire it's just a just a sharp drop and now I'm not really sure what the point of this compensator was for now an AR-15 most of the recoil is back in a straight line so really the only thing that's sort of a vertical recoil is the shooter because of course my upper body and if I'm not braced properly is going to try to absorb that recoil so it is going to bend a little bit especially if you're not paying too much attention you're not really gripping down on the gun but this compensator is meant to alleviate that upward drift of the gun now I noticed uh, when I was firing that it did far, 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 far more than any normal person would need it to. Now, if you're just sitting there, just free floating the gun, it's just resting on your hands and pulling the trigger, it might be okay if you're not, or if you're not bracing at all and you're just, you know, you're way, you weigh 100 pounds and you're not bracing yourself at all for the recoil, it might be, it might do a really good job of keeping the gun flat because again, this is their 3G compensator, so a three gun competition, so you want something that shoots very, very flat and very, very fast. However, this guy here, if you're doing any sort of bracing or, real try, or really trying to control the recoil of a gun, this guy here is going to be about 10 times as effective as anyone would need it to be. So now when I picked this guy up, as I mentioned before, for like $25, I really did not think that this guy here was going to be in any way, shape, or form uh, worthy of its own video or that I would have really strong opinions about it. Um, but now that I've used it a little bit, now that I've fired, you know, about 100 rounds, so not too much, but then again, it was really, really obnoxious to fire through, so I decided not to fire any more. So the title of this video will probably be why you should not purchase the Stag Arms uh, 3G Compensator, uh, because in my opinion, it is absolutely awful at its intended purpose. I have never had a harder time staying on target, especially for fast shooting, than when I had this compensator on my gun. Just that constant knock down of the front of the barrel is absolutely obnoxious. And actually, you'll see it in the video when I'm firing quickly, you'll notice that I'm trying to actually lift up the front of the gun as I'm shooting because that obnoxious downward sharp recoil impulse just pushing the front of the barrel down is absolutely awful. Now, there might be a different use case scenario where this guy might be useful. Um, I can't really think of one. I did try it on my 16 inch upper. Maybe it's better on a pistol. Maybe it's better on a longer barrel. Uh, I don't see why it would be better on either of those configurations. And of course, this one here is uh, in 5.56. That's what it's uh, drilled out for. So you can't, there's not really a different caliber caliber that you can throw through it. So in my experience, that guy there was absolutely awful and I would not recommend it. Now I did actually try to modify it a little bit, but unfortunately this is actually made out of really high quality steel. It's probably 4150 or something like that. So it's really high quality, really, uh, really hard steel. And so just with the hand tools that I had, I couldn't really modify it. I did actually want to kind of bore out the front of it a little bit so more of the gas escapes forward instead of having to be shoved up and therefore sh shoving the front of the barrel down and cut some more holes around, around the bottom and sides and stuff like that to kind of get rid of that sharp downward recoil, um, which is really, really awful and 
probably the worst direction you could possibly have the recoil. At least you're expecting it to go up. You're not expecting it to go down. That's kind of weird when you're firing a gun. And it's very, very jarring, as I mentioned before. But unfortunately, this guy here is a little bit, uh, a little bit too high quality material for me to actually do easily. So I decided uh, I'm just not going to do that. And it was only 25 bucks, so I'm not out all that much. So now normally on this upper, I actually have the Strike Industries Warhog, which is actually, in my opinion, a great muzzle brake. Uh, the side blast is not that excessive. It's only a single chamber design. It's very short. It's about, you know, about that tall, only weighs like two ounces. And in my opinion, it's a very, very good compact muzzle brake that does a good job of actually kind of reducing that recoil impulse or whatever you want to call it. Um, but right now on here, we have this FNN tactical uh, muzzle compensator thing that I haven't tried out yet, but it's just sitting on there right now because as I mentioned, I am trying out a few different muzzle devices for my guns. So just to summarize this compensator, this design here with the nine holes on top, a few tiny holes in the front and then nothing around the rest of it. So all of that, all of those gas are just being shoved upwards, which of course is shoving the front of your barrel down is an awful design. I don't really see the purpose of it. Now, I, after I bought this, I did look around a little bit and a lot of other people were saying the same thing, how it's not necessarily bad at what it's designed to do. It's just a really, really weird jarring feeling when you're shooting and you're having the front of the barrel just nosedive on you. So I would not recommend this. Uh, there are a lot better muzzle brakes or muzzle devices that you can buy for around the same cost. The Strike Industries Warhog that I've had on that gun for about 1500 rounds um, is great and you can find those for around 20 bucks there's a lot of really good brakes and compensators that are going to do uh better than this guy and of course the a2 birdcage or whatever comes on your normal gun is going to be infinitely better than this just because it makes it easier to have follow-up shots and doesn't shove the front of your barrel down every time you pull the trigger so that's pretty much it for the video thank you all so much for watching i hope you all enjoyed please let me know what you guys think down below and i will see you guys in the next one peace off That's an awful feeling. Hey you. Yeah, you. What are you still doing here? The video's over. Wait, 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 wait. Why are you still here? Like, share, and subscribe. Or don't. The choice is yours. But if you do subscribe, thanks. And I like pizza. Peace off. <laughs>